So we in positive territory. It's slightly, the first yeah, months. slightly. I know you were doing a slight calculation for us. Yeah, I think the market up about four or five percent for the quarter. Of course, it was up 10, 12 percent, you know, not that many weeks ago, but it's come off a little bit from that. You know, nothing overly to be concerned about, I wouldn't think, but the market but has But if we post five percent over each quarter... Oh, that'll that be, be a very nice return. <laughs> <laughs> be a fantastic return. return yeah. What is your return, um, your expectations for 2012 overall? No, I can't get terribly excited. We probably do low double digits. I mean, 10, 12 percent maybe. Okay, if, if you include dividends back into yeah. it, because the dividend yield now is not too bad in normal. Absolutely. Bullshit. So Nedbank, bottom of the top 40 today, down three and a quarter of a percent. Yeah, I think Nedbank went ex-dividend ex today. So, but that won't account for the full 3%, but it'll certainly be the lion's share of that. It's the reason why it came down. Um, Implants also and losing And the platinum shares got pounded here plats. again. Interesting because we actually saw um, the platinum price looking slightly better, but l a local currency looking slightly stronger yeah, today. Yeah, the so strengthened a bit. But the platinum, sh the platinum miners... I mean, they've got to get a sustained rise in the, in the rand price of platinum to show you a decent margin. Eh? It's very different to a, a decade ago, these guys had the same margins as what Kumba had. There's, there's, there's very little margin left in this. What's interesting is N10 has actually been disappointing over the last while. It's down almost 2%, sitting at 135 You know, the whole, when the whole Iran, Nigerian rights and all of this yeah. kicked up. Now, the Turk share, thing is also. Share, share went down seriously. They did quite a nice recovery. Now we've got this Turk salt thing. I mean, who knows what's going to happen with the Sturk cell, other than it's going to take years before we get to any kind of decision on it. Now, this is just, I wouldn't worry too much about the Sturk cell thing. Number one, why come up with all of this? How many years after they got the license, when they were supposed to have committed all of these heinous crimes? What, five years or something? Longer. Now, all of a sudden, it's big. You know, I, I think this is, this is opportunistic to say the least, but we'll see what happens. But yeah. unfortunately, we only see what happens in years to come. Absolutely. Okay, so while we Take wait forever. on that, while we wait on yeah. that, uh, something closer to home, Telcom, uh, yes. full-year headline earnings per share, expected to be 25% lower. Basic earnings per share, 90% <coughs> lower. Yeah. Lots of one-off items within yeah, but that look, number. Watch out for accounting, not in Telcom. Watch out for accounting in all financials. Eh? They restated last year. They took multi-links out of last year's figure and they call it a con discontinued operation but the bottom line is they wrote off another billion in multi-links now it doesn't matter if it goes through the income statement or discontinued or one-off they lost a billion rand then they had some other company that they lost 550 million on that i've never even heard of and i follow telcom quite well they've got this other venture i forget its name but it wrote off another 550 million rand on that I suppose in Telcom's books, writing off 500 million doesn't make much difference. But then they spent another 2.2 on Sol C, and uh, not on Sol C, on ATA. Yeah. And I doubt very much if they will ever see a profit on that. So there's another 4 or 5 billion write off coming on that side. Uh, the, you are just surrounded by bad news. Okay, but then is this, uh, you know, when everyone is just sort of pushing away from a specific no, stock, is this no. the time to I, buy? I hear you on that, and I'm normally one of the biggest proponents of that, but only for companies that where the underlying business is still sound and either something has changed globally or locally that's cyclical. In other words, it's still a good underlying business. Telcom, and I have the greatest empathy, and it's easy to be a telecom basher. I've, had the, I've got the greatest em empathy and sympathy for telecom management. Their base industry is in decline. And I don't think there's anything they can do to stop that. So they've tried telecom media. They've tried multilinks. They're now trying ATA to try and generate something else out of their business because their base industry is declining. Do you think it was a mistake declining. that they sold their stake in Vodacom? With hindsight, yes. But at the time, it seemed like a fine idea. I would have probably done the same because it gave them the cash to try and save their fixed line business and try and put in the capex. I mean, they wrote off another, was it another billion rand on accelerated depreciation on their fixed line business? I mean, that basically means the stuff they, where they, they're using is old and decrepit and it's got to get replaced. So I, I actually don't know what the answer is for this. Let's touch on Sassol. It's 370. So it's like I've been keeping a close watch on. It's Sassol is so cheap, I can't understand but why. But why, yes, this is why. And because I, I also want to ask you why Anglo-American Anglo -American is back at 285. We can talk about Anglo, but, so but Sassol is simple. Stocks are looking Sassol so is simple. People don't believe the oil price. Investors don't believe the oil price is sustainable at $125. And Sassol has underpriced that. On Anglo's, 
essentially the market got a serious fright on those whisper PMI numbers that out of China. In other words, Anglos and Billiton, but specifically Anglos, is down because people are worried about Chinese growth. And if Chinese growth is poor on Sunday, Anglo-American price might fall a little bit more because it's already fallen a lot. But if there's anything re approaching reasonable or as expected, Anglo-American and Billiton are going to rally very strongly next week. So what are you, are you re-weighting portfolios at this point? No, look, we underweight equity in, in, in general and have been for a while. It seems to be the case. We participated in the run up to 34,000. We've sold a bit now. Fortuitously for us, we were very overweight the banking shares. They've run, I mean, they're still up quite significantly this year. We're starting to sell some of the overweight banks now because you've got the payoff from that. Actually, we're sitting on our hands a little bit now. We haven't got really big positions in between sectors, within sectors. We've got a couple of positions. Essentially, the biggest one is positive, overweight Anglos, overweight Billiton, underweight Kumba, underweight Platinum and Gold. Fantastic. Food for thought. And to you, Wayne, I wish you a happy Thank you. weekend. Thank you so much for joining us. Wayne McCurry from Momentum Asset Management.